My name is Gavin Evans, and this is my view of women's. Women, women's? Women, women, women's. Women's, women's things? Women's, women's. Women, 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 women's sins. Women's sins? Women's, 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 yes, got it. Anyways, I have a speech impediment, but this was one of my most anticipated movies of the year. The trailer looked amazing. It looked like it was going to explode memories, and that's a subject that really intrigues me. The director, Lisa Joy, also made Westworld, which I haven't seen, but I've heard great things. It's produced by Jonathan Nolan, who's produced lots of Christopher Nolan movies. So there's lots of reasons to be excited for this movie, and unfortunately, it is a big disappointment, but there's still things to enjoy. Let's get into it. The performances in this movie are fine. They're nothing special. I'm a big fan of Hugh Jackman. I think he was absolutely incredible in Prisoners and Logan, but he doesn't do great in this movie. He's fine for the most part, but he doesn't elevate it. Rebecca Ferguson is fine as a femme fatale, which is a decades-old genre trope, and she does a good job in that trope, but she's not given enough to work with to really elevate the material that she's given. So she's still fine in the movie. She's not bad. I just wish she had more to work with. The rest of the cast aren't great. Uh, there's one scene that takes place on the docks, and the actress in that scene was straight up awful, like just terrible acting. But I do have a few other big problems with this movie, and let's begin with the characters. The characters don't feel lived in, which means that they don't feel like they exist outside of this story. It doesn't feel like they have a past before this story or a future after this story. It feels like they only exist within the time we see them, and that's the case here. Now, there is a certain element of Hugh Jackman's past that is discussed, but it's never felt. And I do think that his one and only character trope is that he's in love with Rebecca Ferguson's character, and that's the only thing I can remember about his character, that he was so in love with her, that he would do anything to find her. And that kind of disappointed me because there's nothing else but his character that really stood out. And I feel like they could have explored his character in interesting ways. But what I found to be the most frustrating element was there's a few scenes where he gets beaten up really easily. He doesn't put up much of a fight. But then in the movie, later, there's this great fight scene and it's completely badass. And I'm just like, where was this character in the other fight scenes? Like, this is... It lacked consistency because one scene, he's doing a great job defending himself and attacking the other guy, but the rest of the movie, he gets beaten up and beaten up time and time again. And it's just like, which, which what kind of character is he? Is he a badass or is he just someone who gets his ass kicked all the time? And I don't feel like the movie really knew which one he was. There's a best friend character played by Sandy Newton, and I just don't think the character was well written. I get what they were going for, but the execution of that character just didn't work. My second big complaint is the mystery. The mystery is completely underwhelming in every possible way. I was not invested, I was not intrigued, and just all the different directions it took, I did not care about it. There's all these villains that get introduced and then immediately forgotten, and it just felt so sloppy and so messy and by the end I'm just like I don't even care anymore like I wish I did I wish I cared about everything that happened in the first two acts of the movie but I just didn't I wasn't invested in the mystery because it was so poorly set up and it just felt so sloppily written it didn't feel like it was exploring any specific ideas or themes it felt like they were just trying to fill up the one time so that we could get to the ending and that to me was just really disappointing because I felt like there was lots of potential to be this cool mystery movie where they're exploring different people's memories. And they do do that a few times, but it's not used in any ways that really stands out to me that I'm not going to remember. So that element was definitely a huge letdown. And my last big complaint is that this world is completely flooded. If you want to get somewhere, you have to ride a boat, or if you decide to drive somewhere, they're just barely able to use the vehicles. And I just wish they utilized the world more. Like, it just felt like wasted potential. Like, they could have been a boat chasing or a car chasing or 
more action scenes that take place in the water. Just something to utilize it more because they just tease this world. And I kind of get what it's going for that so many people want to live in the past and all of that. But I just don't think that specific angle was explored enough to really justify this flooded wall. I just wish they utilized the world they set up more because by the end of the movie, I'm just like, well, if the world wasn't flooded, it wouldn't have any kind of impact on the story or on the characters at all. So that entire element was just completely underdeveloped. Okay, I said that that was my last big complaint, but that was a lie. This is gonna be my last big complaint. Uh, there's a scene where there's a bunch of people and they're just like, I'm gonna kill you, Hugh Jackman. And they put him out, he's on the floor, he's about to get shot, the guy takes out his gun and then I'm just like, well, they're not going to kill him, so what's the contrived reason for letting him live? And just when it came about, I was just like, oh my god, that is the dumbest thing ever. It was just stupid. So then they let him go, and then they're like, I better not see you again. But later, he has to go to the same location, so what do they do? Well, they don't even show him entering it. They don't even show him getting into that location again. Instead, it just cuts to him being in the middle of that location. So it's just like, it felt really lazy that way. I know it sounds like I'm completely tearing this movie apart, and I kind of am, but I will say that there was one element of this movie, one key element that completely saved it for me, and that's the ending. In fact, the ending is so good that it kind of frustrates me that the rest of the movie wasn't as good because if I cared for the rest of the movie as much as I cared for the ending, I would have cared for the ending even more so and the entire movie would have left me with a giant impact instead of just the ending. I saw the movie last night and I woke up still thinking about the ending. It's haunting in that way. I do think the ending ties together all the previously established character beats and the ideas of the movie in such a perfect way that it really left a huge impact on me. I also found that the ending utilized the premise in very interesting ways. There's two different characters with two different fates and just the fate of each of the two different characters I just found to be excellent, like top-notch stuff. And I just wish the rest of the movie left me with the same impact I had from the last 30, last 25 minutes of the movie. And there's this one fight scene that I actually found to be really great. And from that fight scene to the end of the movie, I loved. I wish the rest of the movie was that good. But up until that point, I just found it to be kind of lackluster. And to be completely honest, it is so over the top and so completely melodramatic. Like, if you like melodrama, you'll like this movie. But if you don't like melodrama, stay far away because this movie is melodramatic as hell. And I kind of like that about it. It does feel cheesy, but it still worked for me nonetheless. That said, there was some really bad dialogue in here, but you just kind of have to war with it. Some of the dialogue is just really bad. And you're just like, <laughs> that's, um... Well, that's a line of dialogue, all right, and it's not great, but I didn't mind that aspect of the movie. Two last things I want to mention is that there's a character that involves a clock shop, and I thought the idea of that character was very interesting, and I do wish they explored her more. And the music in this movie, ah, it's composed by the guy who composed the music for Game of Thrones, Raymond the Dwindy or something like that. I apologize for not getting his name right. Uh, his score was very forgettable for the majority of the movie, but I thought it actually really elevated the last act of the movie. I do wish it was great consistently throughout though, but the last 10 minutes, it's really great. Women's, 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 women, women, women's is an okay movie. It's frustrating because it's definitely wasted potential, and that definitely becomes clear in the last act and the great directions they take the last act. So it does make the rest of the movie a bit more frustrating, but there's still a melodramatic and over-the-top quality to it that does keep it entertaining, even though the mystery isn't compelling, the characters aren't well-developed, and the performances are nothing special. And I do wish that they utilize the world more, but there's still enjoyment to be had. It is still entertaining and the last act is legitimately really great. So because of that, I'm still going to give Women in the new Hugh Jackman movie a 6 out of 10. Okay, did you see Women in... I think I got it right that time. Nice! Uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon and Gavin out.